rot that some Jewish teenager in the first century never had sex and say she gave birth to a child. Pretty ridiculous. Or that that child grew up and then had been certifiably dead for three days and came back to life. Next thing you find out, this guy's going to be saying, pigs fly too. You don't believe that stuff, do you? So how do you respond? Are you defensive? You say, yes, that's exactly what I believe. Here I stand, like Luther at Corners, or Elijah on Mount Carmel. 450 prophets of Baal versus one prophet of Yahweh. But he didn't back down. How about you? Do you sometimes feel sorry for yourself? Sorry when you're made fun of for the sake of your faith? You're feeling sorry for the wrong person. You should feel sorry for whoever it is that's making fun of you. He's the one who doesn't have a piece of Jesus. She's the one who does not know the joy of having the privilege of suffering a little for the Jesus who suffered all for us. But you cannot expect the world to go, oh, Christianity, well, that makes lots of logical sense. I, I can believe that. No, it's not very believable. Jews seek signs, powerful indications. And what do we get? A dead convict on a Roman instrument of execution. About as wimpy as you could possibly imagine. Greeks seek wisdom. And what does God give to us? Well, here, let me, let me have you do something that might illustrate. Go home after the conference. Ask your congregation to exchange that nice brass cross on the altar with a beautiful brass guillotine. If you are a member of Holy Cross Lutheran Church, go home and begin advertising your congregation in the community as Holy Lethal Injection Lutheran Church. Have your pastor make the sign of the holy electric chair, both upon the forehead and upon the heart, to mark that one as redeemed by Christ the executed. Doesn't it sound absurd? Do you understand why the world doesn't jump at the chance to believe what you believe? And do you? Do you feel sometimes like it would be better if God had given you a, a message that was a little more palatable to the people of this world? Something less embarrassing when they start pointing out how ridiculous it is what you believe. You ingrate. The Jesus that you've been given isn't good enough for you? Do you realize that if you got the Jesus you want, the powerful Jesus, the Jesus that seems wise, why, he would have come down from the cross and proved his strength, and you'd have been left without a savior. Yes, the message of the cross seems like foolishness and weakness, but it is God's weakness and God's foolishness. The weakness of God is stronger than men. Think about it. Jesus hangs his head, gives up his spirit, hands over his life as payment for your life. And in that moment of absolute weakness, he accomplishes what all the powers of earth could never do. He pulls you out of hell and into heaven. That's the strength of God's weakness and the foolishness of God is wiser than men's wisdom. Get together all of the wisest brain trusts in the world. Bring them all together. Say, hey guys, what I'd like you to do is to begin to come up with some ideas that will fix the problems of this world. Give them a week. Give them a year. Give them thousands of years, because that's how long we've had. And suffering continues in the world. We haven't fixed the problems. I'll tell you one thing, that that brain trust 
would never think of asking. Hey God, would you like to send your son to invade this world through a manger? And then take all the iniquities of all these people and transfer them from their permanent record onto Jesus' permanent record. And then let your son be forsaken by you so that these people will never be forsaken by you? That's foolishness. <laughs> and it works. And think about this. Who would ever come up with this foolish idea? Let's take, like, the body and blood that Jesus sacrificed for humanity and put it into, say, bread and wine. And then hand it to God's people to hand them salvation and say, take eat, take drink. Then let's put this guy in front of you wearing what looks like a bad bathrobe and have him be God's mouthpiece to you to say, I forgive you all your sins. How about we take Nothing but water, with nothing attached to it except, except God's promise. And use it to rebirth you as God's child. And write you into your Father's will as an heir of his eternal kingdom. That, my friends, not only the world, but a lot of your fellow Christians would consider to be sacramental silliness. But I'll tell you what, I am a sinner who will be lost forever without God's salvation. I struggle every day to do the good works that I am created in Christ Jesus to do. I have a feeble faith that is slow to stand firm for what I believe and say, here I stand. I need Jesus in water and in words and in bread and in wine. And Lord, if that sacramental silliness Give me more sacramental silliness. Dear Christians, what God has given you to believe, it will continue to offend most people in this world. But I urge you, hear it, believe it, speak it. The message of the cross is wimpy weakness. It is absurd foolishness, and it is incredibly effective. Christ crucified is God's wisdom, God's power, and your salvation. In the name of Jesus.